All Things Motoring is owned and brought to you by Change Cars, South Africa's trusted online vehicle platform. Whether you're looking to buy, sell or just need advice, visit changecars.co.za. Coming up this week on All Things Motoring International, Michael and Ernest visit a jam-packed Cars in the Park event at Swatkorps Raceway. We chat to some proud owners about their cars and what makes them special. This is one of the largest shows of this nature in South Africa. We have been walking around in a place which for me is arguably the best biggest car show in the country mike you built this show up <laughs> i didn't believe you now that i've shipped myself up from cape town to Joburg, i cannot believe that cars in the park is what it is absolutely so august 2022 i had the pleasure of doing my first cars in the park i'm honest i hadn't even heard of it but when i came here last year Ernest, what i saw Literally on change cars we say from A to V, Alfa Romeo to Volvo and everything in between. What have we seen today here? Absolutely. It's one of those festivals for the mind, for the eyes, for the ears, from the rotary sounds we heard early Correct. on to the cars that we haven't seen since childhood, the Crescida. But there's so much coming up in the next two shows about cars in the park. You guys are going to love this one. But for me, a day like today is a combination of the people and the cars. Obviously, the cars is what brings you here, mm -hmm. but the people, the visitors, the owners of these cars, how engaging are they? So engaging, and it's, it's one of those situations where you're talking to a genuine, passionate car enthusiast. Each and every one of them shares a passion of cars, of cars with us. That's what the show is all about. That's what we're all about. And we're here to share that with all of you guys. And they share passion for all things motoring. It's so nice when they say, hi, Mike, we recognize you. Who's the new guy with you? Just kidding. Everybody, <laughs> you're the main man. Everybody recognizes it's Ernest Page on TV. It's the jacket. It's, the jacket. it's reflective. We're going to be playing a little bit of a game. Am I correct? Oh, yes. More that later. I don't know if I'm going to win this game. I don't think this is like go-karting. <laughs> but I'm ready to play and I always play to win. Ernest says he's not sure if he's going to win. Let me just say, being around these cars, being around these people, I'm in my happy space. So, read into that what you like, Mr. Page. Well, enough talking. Let's get chatting about some cars like this incredible shape bucket behind us and much, much more in the show. Okay, so let the game begin. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to go first. That car over there, it's the Ford Focus ST. What engine does that have and from which model is, which other car is that engine from? Two liter? Not 1600. Which, which manufacturer now the turbo? It's a 215 turbo, which manufacturer made that turbo? Oh, that of course, of course, Volvo. Oh. One now to me. <laughs> you got it wrong in the beginning. Okay, over okay. to you. <laughs> right. So we'll, we'll not take one and a half points, just one point. <laughs> Where the points don't matter. This is a dead game. <laughs> okay. So, to make it nice and easy. Don't ask me questions about old cars, please, Mike. Okay. Please. Okay. I'll, I'll make it nice and easy because I'm super confident. Uh. Alpha. Uh. What is the second word to alpha? <laughs> <laughs> Romeo. 
as, as Gugu and uh, Ernest say Romeo, <laughs> as the rest of the uh, Italian-speaking world say Romeo. Romeo. Yeah, yeah. And of course, of course. <laughs> so this one over here, which country was the GTV6 only made in? That's an easy one. Absolutely. In South Africa. Yeah. But I'll go one step further. Go Why was it specifically made in South Africa? There was a of reason. Of course it was homologated for motorsport, just like the 325RS and many other cars. And that's the thing about South African what makes it so unique from that period is that you've just got all these incredible, incredible cars. I don't know what that is, though. <laughs> <laughs> a car <card> golf. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not a GTI. That was a, not a GTI golf. That was a car golf. Who was the designer for many of the Alphas back in the day when these cars? The ended? designers. So there was a couple of designers at the time: Bertoni, Pininfarina, Giorgio. But I think uh, Pininfarina and Bertoni were the identifiable. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm getting a little bit distracted over here because, I mean, the cars that are available are just Spit. magnificent. Eh? So it's time to pull out a bit of a lead. Behind us, Lancia, I have one. What is Lancia famous for when it comes to rallying? Of Which course, particular car? Of course. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a bit of a history lesson. Of course, there was the 037 before that, that right. started it all in the Group B era. Yeah. But then later, Group A was the Lancia Delta Integrale HF, of course. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> Let me make it more specific. Late 70s, early 80s. Uh, specific Lancia. What was it? Wonder Monte Carlo Rally. Ricardo Patrese drove it. Starts with an S. Ah! Um, the front wheel drive one. Rear wheel no, drive? No, 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 I'm thinking of the Fulvia. Yeah. No, I think okay. you got me, I think you got So me. now, you used to get an aftershave, we've done it before <laughs> in a previous show, called Blue... Steel? Blue Stratus. <laughs> yes. Too bad, so sad. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make it easier going forward. So it's uh, getting a bit hot here, you've taken your jacket off, I've taken my... First jacket off of Cape Town, we're not used to this. It's on Cape Town, their but, winters are not cold, they're just rainy and wet. <laughs> but I've got a cold question for you. Um, see those Volvos over there? Oh, yes. 850 T5 turbos, and yeah. those are some of my favorites to dance from that era. 1994, Ex thereabouts? Thereabouts. What was the yellow one called? What was it famously called back in the day? After, it's some food item. Some food I think it item. It could have been Evo magazine that coined the phrase. The, the, yellow, the yellow custard pie. The yellow custard pie. Do you remember that? I do now. I was going to say something about mustard. <laughs> what Close. rhymes with custard? There we go. Okay, it's <laughs> half a point. It's half, half a point. point. Yeah. The year is 1973. The host who happens to be speaking was born. 1972. You, <laughs> you have to make a prediction. 1973, behind us there's a Toyota Hilux. Mm. What is the prediction for the next 50 years if you could make a prediction about this vehicle? It's still going to be around. No, sir. <laughs> it's going to be the top seller for 45 of those 50 years. It might even be yeah. 46, 47 yeah. or 48. Yeah, amazing. What, what an incredible what? South African icon. You pointed something out earlier on. I mean, these mirrors over here found on some of the Mazdas from the same mm. age as well. I mean, I, I wonder if they work. <laughs> they work, basically. But what is so interesting, in the 1970s in South Africa, a left mirror was not compulsory. It was a genuine option that made you the mania. Seatbelts, pop quiz. Optional. What year did seatbelts become mandatory I, in I South told Africa? told you, Mike, we're not allowed to do the year thing because you know you're going to beat me. So, Mike, give us the odds. Take a guess. 1977. That is very, very good. And listen, this is not scripted, unrehearsed, 78. Ah. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll give, take it. Give him a quarter point. <laughs> Stay tuned. After the break, we continue our walk around Cars in the Park. So, the full name of our show is All Things Motoring. International. 100%. Behind us is an incredible Nissan 300. ZX. Yeah. Does it irritate you when you get called something? It's more difficult questions, <laughs> Mike. Come on. But for the international audience, you're in North America, Canada or the US, what they refer to us as a what car? Fair Lady Z in Japan and a Z car in the States, of course. 
but you can watch any interview, any road test, and they'll say, we in the Nissan 300 ZX. ZX, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Let's take a nostalgic trip back to the vibrant 1970s in South Africa, a decade of transformation and new horizons. In the midst of this exciting era, the Nissan E20 became a true icon, leaving an incredible mark as both a camper van and a taxi. The E20 taxi stood as a reliable symbol of urban mobility. Its robust design and efficient engineering provided a safe and comfortable ride for passengers across the nation as it brought people together and connected cities. Mike just bumped into Baledi in Tatleng, and this is his car. Mike, when last have you seen one of these? So I'm impressed by two things. I'm impressed huh? by the car, and I'm yeah. impressed by your pronunciation. Oh, I'm trying. That's, I'm that's trying. impressive. I'm trying. Beautiful 1984, 1985 Nissan E20. When we think of the taxi industry mm. in South Africa, it is the mainstay of our transport yeah, system. Yeah, started it. Absolutely. Nissan E20, Toyota Hiace, but behind us is the most beautiful, original, E20, 16-seater. I asked the gentleman, when last did you use it as a taxi? He said, no, 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 this is only for private use. But lady, hats off to you. You have a beautiful example. And if ever you want to sell it, you've got a willing buyer. Michael Pachut. April 2022, I had probably the best experience of my life in terms of outdoor fun. I'm in Dubai with my little boy Jaden, we go into the desert. We're in one of these incredible 4x4 off-road vehicles, Polaris RZR. Today, I've got the pleasure of speaking to Chad Van Es from Katay Racing. We walk past you. Tell us a little bit about it, Chad. Um, so this is a turbo, 1000cc turbo. Um, it's, it's, it's really for those thrill seekers that want to do some stuff that's super cool. So, yeah. So when you say super cool, let me tell you, I said to Chad, it would be harder to roll this vehicle than not to roll it. The capabilities are incredible. In the dunes, we were at 35 degree angles. We were at 15, 20 degree angles going up. It feels super safe. What is the capabilities of this? So these, you could go zero to 100 pretty quick. Um, <laughs> Damn so quick, mate. Pretty, pretty quick. You could go anywhere. It's got your high, high range, low range, four yeah. by four. And obviously with that turbo, it has a bit of a kick. Cool. So you can you can enjoy it. Um, you can see what you're doing. You can you can really experience the off roads yeah. and just take it anywhere. <laughs> Literally take it anywhere. But now you talk about the experience. For those of you who saw me in the desert, you'll notice we weren't uh, hearing my voice because I was literally screaming and I was flicking the most beautiful flicks you could wish. Tell me, cost wise, what are we looking at so for something like this? For a brand new one, which is that RZR 2023 model over yeah. there. Also a thousand cc turbo, it's going for about a 589,000 Rand. Uh, but this one behind us, this is the Dynamics. It's a second hand version, yeah. but it's going around 528,000 um, at Katze Racing right now. Now just to put it into perspective, if you think that is expensive, a caravan today that is made of fiberglass and doesn't move is 500,000 plus. A new jet ski, a beautiful Sea Dew top of the range 300 jet ski is 600,000. Chad, thanks for speaking to us. For the audience, if you want to have as much fun as I had in Dubai, contact Chad at Katay Racing. You're in for a magnificent experience. Yes, you are, definitely. It's not one of the question descriptors. For you, what is this called Teoda behind Stalin. us? Teoda Stallion. What was the precursor to the Teoda Stallion? TUV, that is incredible. If anybody ever saw like a 1984 Toyota TUV, it looked like they'd taken sheet metal <laughs> and just welded it together. We hated them back in the day, but who was the actor, the South African actor that famously made this famous? So it's interesting. So I remember the actor, the Rambo lookalike, yeah. yellow bucky, yes, yes, climbs yes. off, <laughs> moves a crocodile, <laughs> climbs a tree. Yes. Who was it? Tola van der Merwe. Tola van der Merwe. Tola van der Merwe. Wrong. Tola is tops. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> when one thinks of famous marks, often Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini, Maserati come to mind. But when you think of incredible British marks, Lotus is for me the most evocative name. I'm chatting today to Wayne and Joe. Wayne, wonderful day here at Cars in the Park. Tell us a little bit about the Lotus Club of South Africa. 
Well, thanks very much. Yeah, we've, um, I can't remember our exact date of uh, inception. 1927, 1928, somewhere there? No, it's been... <laughs> a little bit later. It's, but uh, I've been in the Lotus Club since the beginning of 1996, and Joe's the Amazing. first person I met when I joined the Lotus Register nervously because I had a Lotus Excel, a 1986 model, my first Lotus and no dealer network at that stage, and made the most incredible friends over the years. And I now have three of the cars. And um, it's just a brand that I've been passionate about since I was 11 years of I age, and understand. I'm nearly 58. So Lotus <laughs> people are really passionate about their cars. Um, they have their issues, but there's just something iconic about them. It's an iconic Shh, brand. They don't, they don't have any issues. They're faultless. Now, the Lotus Club of South Africa, Joe, how many uh, members would we have roughly? I think about 200, if I'm not mistaken. It's around about. So it's nice, vibrant and strong? Very strong. I mean, they cater for uh, days like today. Um, yeah. They cater for long distance runs where it becomes very social. Of course. Um, they cater for racing as well. So they've got, uh, you know, a, a racing series as well. When and you talk about racing, I mentioned the late Colin Chapman. For me, yeah. Lotus is synonymous with Formula One. But talking about synonymous, behind us, a beautiful Lotus Esprit. Is there a more Lotus name than Esprit? Not in my opinion, but I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite? Oh, the Lotus Esprit. I've, I've owned one since 1986. So, beautiful, so, yeah, beautiful. To me, they, they're iconic cars, like you say. They just, they, just they, they, they get in and drive. So what is interesting about the Lotus Esprit in particular, it was one of the first supercars, because it was a supercar, yeah, to be turbocharged. Yeah. Massively small engine, excuse the contradiction. Yeah, yeah. 2.2 litre four cylinder, am I right? Correct. What kind of kilowatts was that putting out at the time? Do you uh, know at all? I think about yeah. the earliest ones, the two litre ones, was only about 96 kilowatts. 96? So, yeah, it wasn't very strong. It was only a two litre, normally aspirated. Amazing. Normally aspirated. Now imagine calling a supercar a two litre normally aspirated. Colin Chapman said, you know, even with the engine off, it left the other standing. Think about that for a while. That's a beautiful <laughs> saying. Even with the engine off, what else was Colin Chapman synonymous for? What was his mantra? when it came to motorsport? Uh, a lot of things. Uh, in motorsport, it yeah. was sponsorship. Yeah, uh, in for sure. In Formula One, it was innovative designs like like some of the ground effect right. cars. Correct. I mean, absolutely fabulous. I mean, and to keep it as light as possible. He said, and, oh, and, add, 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 add more, yeah, add lightness. Add lightness. Yeah. But interesting, you spoke about cigarette sponsorship. What was the first cigarette sponsorship in Formula One, and it was Colin Chapman. Gold Leaf. Gold yeah. Leaf, Gold correct. Leaf, yeah. 1977, mm. so I followed Formula One my whole life. Yeah. 1977, they introduced the ground effects car, Gunnar Nielsen and Mario Andretti in the team. 1978, Mario Andretti and Ronnie Peterson walked the championship. One and two, Ronnie Peterson sadly lost his life yeah. at the uh, Italian Grand Prix. Been lovely chatting to you. Thank you. May the club, may the Wonderful. brand go from strength to strength. Thank you so Thank much you. for having Thank us. You so Thank much. you so much. Stay tuned. After the break, it's more old campers and fun from Cars in the Park. Okay, so here is something interesting. In the late 1990s, I had something called a Ford Telstar. Oh I can yeah, see, that I was can, cool. That was, but I, I, like you, but I can see you don't like it. So I say to Ernest, behind us, Mazda MX-6, absolutely love it. He goes, no, this is a car you absolutely? I hate, I don't like this car, I've never liked it. The engine, is it's a decent engine. It's got the V6 engine, which is a good engine. Correct. But they should have made it rear wheel drive. It's got the looks, yeah. but they should have made it rear wheel drive. I think I'm taking it personal because back in the day in South Africa, there were few amazing cars that came to South Africa. True. This, I felt had the potential to be amazing. What I just loved about this car was the smoother. So you spoke about the front wheel drive. I personally have always preferred either front wheel drive or all wheel drive. I'm not a, I'm not a huge uh, rear wheel drive fan. Hence why I like Audi more than BMW. Yes, yes, yes. But for our audience, if any of you have a Mazda MX-6 that you're looking to sell, must be in immaculate original condition. Don't call me. No mileage. Don't <laughs> call him. Call me. He's just going to sponsor it. Ah. The 200 SX, the only car that I regret selling. I wish I kept my one. So the question is yes or no? Yes! For me, it's yeah, not even yes. yes or no. It's a definitive near. Near, near, You near. owned one of these? I owned one of these. 1993 Nissan 200 SX. I was the bee's knees. <laughs> this car had the Nissan Sentra 1800 engine, except it was a turbocharged. It was the most obnoxious car I've ever driven. 
no power, nothing. All of a sudden, I just, oh no, I had to discard. 128 kilowatts stuff from the factory, turbocharged T25. What's not to like, Mike? The only thing Viscous I LSD. <laughs> the only thing I liked about this car was the pop-up headlights. But I can truthfully say, not being argumentative, the most disappointing car. You say the only car you regret selling. Yes, I'm going to be argumentative and just say on this one, no offense, Mike, with all yeah. due respect, he's wrong. This is the only car I regret buying. I'm right. More than a vehicle, the VW Auto Villa was a lifestyle choice. It's an emblem of adventure and the spirit of exploration. With its iconic Volkswagen craftsmanship and innovative design, it encapsulated the spirit of freedom that South Africa is known for, offering you a canvas to create memories with family and friends. Whether you're traversing the urban landscapes or venturing into the wild heart of the country, the VW Auto Villa ensured you did so in utmost comfort with reliable German engineering. You get special and then you get truly special. Anyone who's into caravanning or camping, if I say to you Auto Villa, you will know what I'm talking about. Behind me, an original 1975, maybe 1976 VW Auto Villa, and I'm speaking to the very proud owner, and rightfully so, Niels Porchetta. Niels, thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about this magnificent machine. Uh, I bought it at, uh, from a guy in Rustenburg. Right. Uh, the machine wasn't uh, in, in space. Yes. I guess I had to fix the head, cylinder head and so on. But uh, it was originally, it, I, I rebuilt the whole thing yeah. from the top to the bottom. And you won't believe there's over 800 screws in that silver strips around this I, I can imagine. But for me, what is incredible, my earliest memory of a holiday is caravanning in 1978. I don't remember the caravan park or the plot we had, but I remember seeing an auto villa in 1978. We were in a Sprite Musketeer yes. for our audience, driving something like this. Engine, 1600 VW Beetle engine? No. No, what have you got in here? It's a, two, it's a original two liter motor. Two liter? It's got an automatic box. Yeah. Only 100 of them were bought yeah. in the auto automatic. A lot of people changed it from automatic to manual yeah. because the automatic wasn't that strong. Yes. Yeah. But you had to put the oil coolers and stuff like that right. in there also. Uh, mine's got an oil cooler uh, with fan, everything yeah. in it. Uh, 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 engine was rebuilt, automatic was uh, yeah. uh, rebuilt, suspension was done, done by me. What it was, it was done by maybe some few, you can, you yeah. can, uh, but, but still it's an old car. But it I'm working about nine years on it now. But beautifully and original. One of the things that has always struck me about the auto villa, it reminds me of a tortoise, as in literally, yes. an animal with its home on its back, yeah. This is a vehicle with a, its home on its back. You indicated VW at the time didn't want to acknowledge this vehicle? Yeah, people, the VW clubs don't, because they don't see it as a Volkswagen original because it was combined by Jurgens. Yes. Uh, the Jurgens originally he bought panel vans, it was panel vans Correct. that it was based on. So we carried off and then we built the caravan, put the caravan original. It's completely wood also, like a wood frame, everything in it. Uh, so it, it's not, it's like they don't accept it as <laughs> a Volkswagen. Sure. It's like the old Porsches when 908 is in both, but, but because it was a real first, first front wheel drive, but this is the same with this. So I've got so good news a, for you, whether it be myself or every one of our audience, I guarantee you they accept it, they want it, so do I. Niels, thank thanks. you for chatting to us, wishing Perfect. you fantastic success with the project. It's looking good already. Can't Thank wait you. to see the end result. My wife now it's my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. On a day like today, we cannot possibly fit everything into one show. And that's why we split up this incredible show here at SWAT Corp into two episodes. We've come to the end of our first episode and it has been an incredible journey. But as I said, it's not the end. Join us again next week for more from Cars in the Park here at SWAT Corp. Oh, I thought you wanted me to do a I thought this was you. Okay. <laughs> so what I absolutely promise the audience. We've been walking around what in my mind is arguably. We've been walking around to. <laughs> okay, so we've been walking around in what is. Cars in the park. Okay, start on join, yeah.
Join us again. Join us again next week. Join us again next week. Join us again next week for more from Cars in the Park. Yet what comes. All Things Motoring is owned and brought to you by Change Cars, the platform buyers trust with good reason. Change Cars works exclusively with the best manufacturer-approved dealerships. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa.